Uh, Charles Jenkins wrote that song. I plead, I plead the blood. Yes. But, but what, what does that mean when we're saying we plead the blood? But we're pleading the blood over demonic strongholds, over hard strongholds, Amen. over situations in our life that can't nobody else help us but the blood of Jesus. Glory Amen. to God. that you would do a mighty work, a supernatural work, God. We thank you for the majestic power of your word, but we also ask that you would release an anointing that makes preaching, teaching, and the receiving of your word easy. Take that which appears to be complex and make it simplified for us. Make this message tailor-made for those who are watching and listening under the sound of our voice. And even as we are willing vessels, God, we say thank you for your grace that you're not allowing any flesh to have its way tonight. Yes. We thank you that this word shall go forth tonight unhindered and unchecked by any satanic force and we call it done, done. in Jesus name. In Jesus name. And it is so. It Somebody is so. say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory Hallelujah. To God. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, take five seconds and give God yeah. praise. Yeah. Let's give God some Hallelujah. praise like that. reason to tell him thank, thank you. you hallelujah hallelujah Woo! good god from heaven Glory i feel the god. holy ghost in this place tonight good god two questions we might get to both but we're at least going to get to number one right <laughs> question number one how do we appropriate the power and the protection of the blood we might just deal with that and not move any further okay if by chance we get to question number two by way of the holy ghost question number two how do of the blood. Amen. How do we tap into the supernatural power of the blood? Thank you, Jesus. I believe that each one of these are so strong in their own right mm -hmm. that we may not get to question number two. So let's take our time and just slow walk this bad boy all the way to the altar. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How do we appropriate the power and the protection yeah. of the blood? Here's what's key. There's power, uh -huh. there's protection, yes. and there's provision Come on. in the blood. Yeah. Let's, let's understand that. Uh -huh. There's power, power, there's protection, protection, and there's provision, provision in the blood. Somebody say, put some word on put it. Put some word on it. Well, I believe I will. Hallelujah. <laughs> Revelation right. 12 and 11 says it like this. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Uh -huh. And by the word of their testimony, uh -huh. and they loved not their lives unto the death. Uh -huh. I just want to go ahead and pull the scab off of the sword right here uh -huh. off the back. Because I want you to see something about this scripture. Yes. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb, the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. Uh -huh. This threefold scripture. Uh-huh. Because until you're willing to stare death in the face Come on, Pastor. and give your life 100% to Jesus Christ. Well, and check this out. Embrace any outcome yes, that yes. could possibly or potentially come your way. Uh -huh. This scripture is powerless to you. Yes. Let me say that again. Mm -hmm. Until or unless you're willing to stare death in the face. Uh -huh. Give your life 100% to Christ. All right. And embrace any outcome okay. that could potentially come your way, uh -huh. this scripture is useless. My God. Think about that. Are you willing to put your life on the line for your faith? My God. Now, My we God. laugh all the time when we say Muslims will die for their faith. Mm -hmm. Don't we say that all the time? Never heard if, of that. Yeah, I guess. 
don't don't they, well nine eleven. Oh yeah. They, they oh, were, okay. they were they, willing they, to they, die, right? The terrorists. Yeah. They're right. Okay. They call it jihad, which is a word for war in the Muslim religion. They thought they were doing a work of God, mm -hmm. which shows you how scatterbrained they are to me. That's right, my personal right. opinion. Right. But they thought they were doing a work for the Lord. Right. And right. on some level, they could have been. Mm -hmm. And I'm not doubting that or discounting that. But here's the whole thing. The fact of the matter is they were so inclined by their religious beliefs uh -huh. that no matter what it was they were willing to face death yes uh -huh. for the purpose of their religion my god my now god. you look at it from a standpoint of just being a human uh -huh. it didn't look right it didn't sound right it didn't sit right with us because why would your religion dictate that you take the lives of other people uh -huh. based on something you believe that you're doing for god right what god are you serving come on Pastor. at any rate Let's bring this thing back into some level of reality for us. Uh -huh. The fact of the matter is, the point I'm trying to make here is, are you willing to face death for the purpose of what you say you believe? My we've God. heard stories and we've seen movies uh -huh. where people say, okay, do you believe in Jesus Christ? Uh -huh. If you believe in Jesus Christ, are you willing to die for what you believe in? Right. Let that sit. Uh -huh. Are you willing to die for what you believe in? My God. Come on, Pastor. Let that sit. Uh-huh. Are you okay? Let me let me give it to you from another perspective to, to put the right spin on it. Uh-huh. Because this is about context. All right, all right. Let's get some context for, for the scripture tonight. Okay. Are you willing to die for your child? Mm. Mm. Jesus, Jesus. Are you willing to die? For your spouse. Woo. Jesus. Now, let me put my own little context on it. For Jesus Christ, the religion that we say we have under Christianity, believing in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, uh -huh. and now the one who not only through his blood that he shed for us on Calvary gives us power, uh -huh. gives us protection, gives us provision causes us to wake up in the morning and open up our eyes, he didn't have to do it. Causes us to have money in our bank account, he didn't have to do it. Causes us to be in our right come mind, on, on. he didn't yes, have to do yes. it. Causes us to be walking in health and in wealth, uh -huh. he didn't have to do it. Have Keep do your it. child safe when other people have lost their child. My God. Keep Hallelujah. your family intact when other people don't even talk to each other no more. Uh -huh. That's good. Family. After all of that, do you believe in that or not? That you would be willing to lay your life down the same way that the rooster at the Ken house lays his life down when we have to go outside and eat us some yard bird. Uh huh. Well, because the rooster walks around and prances throughout the chicken yard all day. Jesus. He gets up at five and six in the morning. <laughs> cock a doodle doo! He's, he's out there cock a doodle doo! <laughs> but guess what? Mr. Big, Big Bad Rooster, Ooh, Jesus. when we ready for some chicken. Come on. The rooster has to do what? <laughs> the rooster has <laughs> the rooster got to lay his life down. Come on. That's right. It's like Jesus said to the young ruler, the rich man. Mm -hmm. He said, Fool, tonight your life will be required of you. Of you. Mm -hmm. What would you do if your life is now required of you? Based on what you believe. That's why I said, God. let me go ahead and pull the scab off now. Uh -huh. Let's not get too happy. Because when we talk about the power of the blood of Jesus, there would be no remission of sins. Except there be the shedding of some blood. Yes. So how do we appropriate the power and the protection of the blood? Mm, 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 mm. I'm going to lay the foundation a little bit more. Somebody say, put some more word on put it. Put some more word on All it. Right. If I'm not giving you word, I'm not giving you anything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John 3 and 17. Uh -huh. God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Let us understand something. Back in the old time, I feel the Holy Ghost now. <laughs> Back in the Old Testament, we notice that any time someone needed to be forgiven, mm -hmm. there had to be the shedding of blood. Mm -hmm. By what? Bullocks? Uh 
Lamb. lambs, bulls, mm -hmm. all types of animals. Right, there has to be a shedding of blood in order for forgiveness to be fulfilled in the Old Testament. Amen. Okay. All right. Let's start there. Uh -huh. Because through the blood, we are redeemed. Yes. Through the blood. Through the blood. We are purchased. Well. Through that same blood. Well. He justifies us. He cleanses us. We are, as I like to say, brought nearer and closer to the Lord. Through the shedding of blood. Right, right. We are saved from the wrath of this world uh -huh. by the shedding of blood. Yeah. And so much more. Why are we saved or how are we saved? Uh -huh. Because Jesus is a propitiation or a middleman or a liaison or a go in between or a person who stands in the gap between us uh -huh. and all the suffering that we should have suffered. Right, right. And all the things that we should have been convicted of. Mm -hmm. He stands in the gap by the shedding of his blood. The bullocks and the bulls and the lambs and all the other animals back in the Old Testament in the antediluvian days who had to be sacrificed on the altar yes. were just a metaphorical example of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who was and is to come. come now that he has come over in the New Testament, uh -huh. we move from a Old Testament of law. Uh -huh. That's right. That's a covenant of law. Mm -hmm. God knew we weren't going to be able to deal with it. Yeah. So He said, "I'm going to have to send somebody down there and get these people." Right. Mm -hmm. When He couldn't find anybody to swear by, mm -hmm. He began to swear by Himself. Woo, when He couldn't find anybody to come down here and mm -hmm. save us, Jesus. He broke off a piece yeah. of Himself oh, and sent it. By way of the Holy Ghost. Yes, when it yes. got down here, it impregnated a girl named Mary. Uh -huh. Who at that time was somewhere between 12 and 15 years old. Uh -huh. When she had that baby, Whew. he had to come through the womb of a woman. Yes. Because we had to have a Savior on, who could not be touched by reason of infirmities. We had to be saved by a Savior yes. who was under the same influences that all of us are under. Right. Because he wanted to be an example of what we could become. Jesus. So now God created a brand new covenant which fulfilled the old covenant. Didn't throw it away. Didn't cast it out of the door. But he, he fulfilled it by saying, hey, you couldn't handle the covenant of law. I'm going to give you a pass. It's time for the covenant Ooh, of Jesus. grace. Now that you have the covenant of grace, I'm opening up a door that says, okay, you might be born into sin. Uh-huh. You might be shaped in iniquity. Jesus. Your parents might not have even been saved. Jesus. But I'm going to give you a pass because by the blood of Jesus, I'm saving you. By the blood. By the blood of Jesus, I'm cleansing you. Yes, By God. the blood of Jesus, By I'm building you up. Hey, and if you learn how to apply my word to your life, yes. you might be stuck in a rut, but I'm bringing you out. Bringing you out. You might have you, a yeah. mouth like a, sa a sailor with nothing but profanity, but I'm bringing you out. I'm bringing you out. You might have sickness and well, disease in your life, but I, through the blood of Jesus, Glory I'm bringing you out. I'm trying to show you the power of the blood before you can appropriate the protection of the blood. You can't use something that you don't understand. So now we have to give you a little bit of a foundation why the blood, when the blood, and how the blood can cleanse you and can set you free. Yes, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. I'm hearing you, Pastor. Glory to God. You can't do this without having a relationship with our Lord. Amen. That's right. That's right. This is not about religion. Mm. This is about relationship. Yes. Yes, Lord. Even seasoned saints understand that you can have everything working right. Be a believer. Uh -huh. Be a tither. Uh -huh. uh, 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 spend time with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Do everything right. And still hell can come knocking at your door. That's right. That's right. But guess what happens when the, 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 the death angel comes knocking on your door? Mm. If you plead the blood. If you plead the blood. Because there's two worlds. There's a spiritual world and there's a natural world. My God. My God. There's plead an the angel blood. of Hallelujah death. Jesus. That angel God. comes to do a job in the earth. Thank you, Jesus. 
But there's also an angel of mercy. Yes. Because when we appropriate the blood by speaking that thing into existence, uh -huh. by appropriating the power of it, by speaking it over our lives, yeah. we are reaching over into the darkness of the spirit realm uh -huh. where the blood resides. Thank and we're pulling out what we need in our life. So when you hear somebody say, mm -hmm. I plead the blood over my sickness and disease, mm -hmm. it simply means, okay, in the natural, I got a sickness. Yeah. In the natural, I got a disease racking my body. But over here in the spiritual, I'm pulling out what I need. Why do we say it's already done? Because over in the spirit realm, it's already done. Why can you be sick in your body, in the natural thing, but over here in the spirit realm, you're already healed? Well, you have to initiate, appropriate the blood. How do you appropriate it? Well, you make a transfer. Of the power of the blood yes, found yes, over yes. here in the Hallelujah. spirit realm, you transfer it over here into the natural realm. All right, and All just right. like yes. a seed yes. that's planted under some dirt and under some soil, Hallelujah. it takes some time for the blood to work. Yeah, because this is not for the faint of heart. Mm -mm. God wants you are committed to Him. Thank you. You Lord. can't just say I plead the blood and wake up tomorrow and be supernaturally healed. You have to put, as the old folks used to say, you have to put some timber in there, <laughs> some kindling. You got to put some kindling on this fire. Yeah, How are you going to get the fire burning and you don't have no kindling? Yeah. You can't gaslight a good fire. Come on, Pastor. You can't use kerosene in a good fire. Right, right. You got to have some kindling. Hallelujah. 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 Because you might be in a place where there is no gas. Right. You might be in a situation where can't nobody help you but God. But God. And you got to do it God's way, God's not way. man's way. God's so you got to reach over into the spirit world, over into the deep. Yeah. The Bible says in Proverbs 16 and 3, if you roll your works and your cares over onto the Lord, yeah. he will cause your thoughts to become agreeable with his will. In other words, when you speak those things that be not as though they were, you're speaking them because they already are over here in the spirit, and you're making a transfer from the spirit realm into the natural world. That's how you appropriate the power and the protection of God's word and initiate yes. the, the profundity of the blood in your life. I hope yes. this is helping somebody this tonight. This is helping us, Pastor. This is good, y'all. I'm serious. Pastor can preach this and teach this by himself. I'm just thinking about that son. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood, yes. glory to God, of the Lamb. Hallelujah. When I'm thinking about the blood, I'm thinking about the sacrifice, glory yes. to God. The sacrifices that were made for us because of Jesus' blood. And I was reminded over in Exodus, the 10th chapter, I believe, I, I stand to be corrected, the 12th chapter, the 13th verse, and it reads, and the blood shall be to you for a token, Woo, God, for Lord, a Lord. token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, he said, I will pass over. My God, God was getting ready to send through the last, uh, that's, that's uh, Exodus 12 and 13. The last uh, plague that was going out to Pharaoh, and he was getting ready to kill and uh, all of the uh, firstborn sons. And God told them, but when I see the blood, if you yes. put, to put it on your doorpost, I'm going to pass over. Amen. Glory to God. Because the blood was a token. Hallelujah. And Jesus is our token. You know when you were little and you would play those games and you get so many tokens, you'd be so happy to take your tokens up there and exchange it for either candy or a gift. Glory to God. And that's what Jesus is. He's our token. Amen. You know, he paid a debt that he did not owe. Glory to God. Amen. And now we owe a debt that we cannot pay. Hallelujah. Amen. But Amen. Jesus' blood came to wash all of our sins away. Yes. Hallelujah. And so it's something about the blood. When Rahab was getting ready to get in trouble, she helped the spies. Hallelujah. They told her that we'll hide you. And when you see, when, when God sees the blood upon your door path, hey. doorpost, he's going to pass over you because you helped us. Hallelujah. Right. And we say all the time what you do for others, God will do for you, glory no. to God. And so we honor God for his blood. We said we're going to talk about the blood of Jesus because so many times, you know, we plead the blood, we cast out devils, and we plead the blood of Jesus. Uh, Charles uh, 
Uh, what's his name? Uh, Charles Jenkins wrote that song. I plead, I plead the blood. Yes. But, but what, what, what does that mean when we're saying we plead the blood? But we're pleading the blood over demonic strongholds, over hard strongholds, Amen. over situations in our life that can't nobody else help us but the blood of Jesus. Glory Amen. to God. And so we honor God because he died on his way to the cross, saints of God. They did the Lord Jesus so wrong. Y'all remember, because we talk about it every first Sunday during communion, glory to God. Yeah. But I really begin to think about when he was up there on that cross and they begin to nail him to the cross and how they, they took up and pierced him in his side and blood came pouring out. My God, yeah. my God. When you think of blood coming pouring out, you said, God did it just for me, just for me. Hallelujah. He, he died on the cross for you and I, saints of God. And it's just a beautiful thing to know that we can't plead the blood of Jesus. If my husband is not feeling good and he's going through something, I said, Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus over Mervyn right now, God. Have your way in him in the name of Jesus uh, because the devils tremble at the name of That's Jesus. Right. So right. you plead the blood in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. And so, saints, we must start back pleading the blood of Jesus. Right. Let's not forget what Jesus has died, died, how Jesus died for us. That's why I said, and this is, do this in remembrance of me. He said, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. What was he saying? Take the cup, which is my blood. Woo! Glory to God. Take the cup, which is my blood. Hallelujah. Yeah. Because when you drink, it has a way of washing some things out. Glory right. to God. Right. It has a way of purifying, purifying. Hello. Hallelujah. That's right. So it's in this, he said, as often as you do this, glory to God, do it in remembrance of me. Because it was nobody but God. Hallelujah. Yeah. That came into this world to save us and sanctify us and fill us with his Holy Spirit. I have a problem these days when I hear people tell me they don't believe in God. What do you mean you don't believe in God? Huh. Glory to God. It's just the mere fact that, that you can open up your mouth and say God. Hallelujah. There's a God. Hallelujah. But we know that it runs deeper. Hallelujah. Because it's demonic strongholds. It's a spirit of deception. Yes. But we got to plead the blood of Jesus against the spirit of deceptions, y'all. Right. We got to plead the blood of Jesus over the minds of our children, over our cousins, over our uncles, over our aunties, people who don't believe in God. Let's plead the blood of Jesus that God, hallelujah, would save them, that give them a change of life. God can do it. That's right. Why? How do I know? Because he's willing that none should perish, but right. all should come to repentance. Amen. Amen. God is a loving, he's a caring God. He loves us too much to keep us the same way we are. Hallelujah. <laughs> so we must understand that there's nothing too hard for God. You must understand that you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. It's okay to plead the blood. I plead the blood. There's some things right now that you are dealing with and you're saying, I don't know how I'm going to get through it. I don't know when God is going to release me or bless me, but I plead the blood of Jesus over my mind because the enemy will try to come, steal, kill, and to destroy. Hallelujah. But God said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And it's because of the blood. Hallelujah. That we can have life and have it more abundantly. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so I'm Question one. We're sticking on question one. Okay, go ahead. go ahead and step on this thing in, in a fresh new way tonight because I, I saw something in that scripture that you called out just a moment ago. I think we need to work on that a little bit. Okay. Simply okay. because there's a lot in this. Uh huh. Okay. Is that Exodus 12 and 13? Exodus 12 and 13. All right. I, I, there's a lot in this, and I think we need to kind of extrapolate out of it everything that's in there that we need for this teaching tonight because i want you to get the concept of what this of what's going on yes okay? yes uh -huh. and, and we talked about context but now i want you to get the concept all right of what we're talking about here yes, when, when we talked about earlier that there is a a death angel uh -huh. and when you think of the death angel i want you to think of death defying situations uh negative circumstances uh -huh. personal predicaments all right all right painful moments in your life yeah and all of that is what's represented when i talk about the death angel uh -huh. but also when i talk about the angel of mercy uh -huh. that's the one who carries the blood Woo! okay yes. <laughs> so so when we say i plead the blood yes 
you're not just saying something because it sounds good. Right, right. You know, mm -hmm. we plead the blood of Jesus because think of it like this. Mm -hmm. When you pray, all you can pray. Come on, Pastor. Now what? Right. When you sung every song you could sing. Uh-huh. Now what? Now what? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you call all the prayer warriors, mm -hmm. you all have talked and prayed and cried and snotted on each other's shoulder uh -huh. up to two and three in the morning. Now what? Come on, Pastor. Because your situation still has not changed. Uh -huh. That's uh -huh. why I'm saying, now what? Now what? So let's put some word on it again. Yes. Exodus 12 and 13 says it like this. The blood shall be a sign for you uh -huh. on the doorposts of the houses where you live. Yeah. Get that. Uh -huh. Because we have, for the last two and a half years, mm -hmm. had a red it was a, it was a, uh, scarf. a scarf mm -hmm. over our front door for the last two and a half years. Uh -huh. Because during the pandemic, mm -hmm. there was a death angel uh -huh. going throughout the land. Mm -hmm. And we covered our front door mm -hmm. with a red scarf. Yes. As a symbol, mm -hmm. metaphorically, of what this house stands for. Right. And what we stand for is we have a faith that's under the umbrella of salvation and the blood of Jesus that was shed on Calvary. And some people just don't even know what that is when they come to the house. Right. We don't even talk about it. Right. But just putting in a little e e e excerpt here is that it was another pastor and first lady who handed us those scarves, praise the Lord, because they realized that the people of God need these scarves over their house. Yeah. Over because it's symbolic to what happened That's in right. the Bible. And a lot of times when you believe in something, you almost become that, right? And so we believe in the symbolic what's the word symbolism. symbolism of the Bible or in the Bible. So yeah. we hung it over our doors and we pleaded the blood of Jesus. And people would look. I remember when we first moved, you know, when we moved over to this house, we put it on the window. And I remember a truck was driving by and he just stopped and took a picture of our door. I guess, you know, he was just very, you know, kind of intrigued by what was going on. But I said, Lord Jesus, thank you for covering our home. Amen. So that's why we do those type of things. That's why we have communion. Because again, in office, you do this. Praise the Lord. And so it's so important. But go ahead, Pastor. This is how we appropriate the power, the protection, and the provision of the blood. By speaking the word, applying the principles, and as, let me say like this, and believing in the word. Because as you're believing in this thing called the word, mm -hmm. you, you have to at some point walk it out, walk it out, and walk it out. Amen. Amen. In other words, you have to align yourself with the word. Yes. If you believe that it takes gas to drive your car. Right, right. You go to the gas station. Exactly. Mm -hmm. If you believe that the prescription that the doctor has prescribed for you is going to keep you alive, mm -hmm. you take a pill. Right. But there are some of us who believe all of that. But mm -hmm. like I said at the beginning of the broadcast tonight, there is another level to this thing. Right, right. There's a super that can go on top of your natural. Woo! 